I occasionally encounter Europeans in the comment sections of circumcision-related videos, and the the comments they often give are something along the lines of, "That's that's so barbaric. I'm so glad we don't do that here. We don't do that here in Europe." Uh, things of that nature, and. Obviously, I, I mean, I appreciate the sentiment because they're obviously on our side, nominally, right? And they are. Um, I don't doubt that they abhor circumcision. I have something of a problem, though, with this, um, you know, we don't do that here idea because, well, I mean, on a fundamental level, they, it, it, it does happen over there. In most places, it's largely Jewish and Islamic, well, especially Islamic in, in certain places now. But also, I mean, in, in Britain, I, I believe that the circumcision rate in Britain is somewhere between 3.8 and 5% for newborns. And that's about 1% for Jews, 1% for Muslims. But that leaves between 1.8 and 3%. You know, who are these people? These, as, as near as I can tell, these are... These are blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white boys being tied down and forcibly circumcised. And I imagine, I imagine these are the holdouts left over, the families that are holdouts left over after the NHS dropped support for circumcision and fu funding for circumcision. And I believe 1949, there was a big article called The Fate of the Foreskin, published around that time, that triggered a change in the NHS, and they ceased funding it, I believe. But, I mean, you imagine you know, we're only potentially two or three generations removed, so it only took two, you know, maybe two generations of really ignorant people, and now we we still have a... We, there are still young people in Britain uh, who, who are circumcised. You know, com complete aliens in their own country. I should also add that I know through other people, you know, I, I'm, in other words, I'm about a degree separated from them. I know people in the UK who were circumcised at birth, not non-Jewish, not Muslim. These are young British boys who were circumcised at birth. Uh, who's, uh, it, I mean, the, some of the people I'm talking about, their lives have been destroyed by it. Some of the things I usually say are uh, circumcision breaks up marriages, circumcision wrecks families, circumcision murders souls. And it's not an exaggeration. These people's lives were destroyed by it. These are young men. Looks like a male model. And yet psychologically and, and sexually, these people are just destroyed in this attitude of, oh, that doesn't happen here. R really deprecates and obfuscates their suffering. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind as well. And the same is true for places like like Australia, Australia, New Zealand. The, the same situation is true there, except that the changeover was more recent, I think late 60s and then into the 70s, where the medical schools started. And there it was the medical schools that actually started teaching, no, this is unnecessary, this is not good, stop doing this. And it ended. But we're not that far removed from it, and it still does happen. Uh, in Australia, I believe it's not permitted to happen in their health, health service, National Health Service hospitals. Um, but it still happens, and, and the rate there is much higher, between 15 and 20, maybe above 20%. Still high. It's higher than I thought it was. In Australia, the rate is higher than I thought it was, and in Canada, it's lower than I thought it was. But anyway... This happens, and so when these people say, "It, you know, oh, I'm glad it doesn't happen here." Well, it does happen here. And the the I'm let me get to the part w w why this is a problem. I have long said that in circum in societies where circumcision is prevalent, people don't want to talk about circumcision, and in societies where circumcision is no longer as prevalent, people don't have any desire to talk about circumcision because they don't think it's a problem. And the problem 
I mean, this is this is the essence of the problem. Claiming that it doesn't happen here feeds into this complacent mindset where, you know, oh, you know, we, we don't do it. When in reality, there's an enormous amount of work that needs to be done in even in places like the UK and Australia, well, even in Central Europe, where, where there was no uh, Western established, you know, you know, hospitalized, medicalized circumcision. We now have large Jewish and Muslim populations that we have to contend with. So it, it, it leads to a, a complacent state of mind where there's nothing we can do. We need, we need to work to outlaw it. We need to work um, to provide some kind of comp compensation for the victims. But I've been advocating... Uh, seizing the assets or garnishing the the cash flow of hospitals and doctors to fund organizations like Forgen to come up with a regenerative, a tissue regeneration solution to foreskin restoration and implementing it on their victims. I've long advocated that. We have to lobby to, to have our, our government stop funding circumcision initiatives in Africa. This is insane. So there's, there's a whole bunch that needs to be done in Europe, I guess the fundamental thing is that they think it doesn't happen there. It does happen there, and it's not yet outlawed. It's not, you know, it's not actually outlawed. Circumcision in Europe has not been dealt with in a de jure sense, only a de facto sense. In other words, it's it's really only co a coincidence of their national histories that they don't have a prevalence of circumcision, and it, their current state is is just a coincidence, more or less. And this this was not this was not acceptable in the case of female circumcision. Female circumcision there 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 was some history. It was happening in American hospitals uh, to women, uh, apparently in small numbers, but by and large by the by the at the time the the FGM bill actually was brought up and passed, it had ended. So this de facto end to female circumcision was not enough. People wanted to enshrine it in the law of the land, and that's what we—that's what we have to do, and that is not yet the case in Europe. Finland may be—I'm not entirely sure what's going on on the ground in Finland. I've heard no, it's—I've heard yes, it is, and then I've heard no, it's not, and then I've heard, well, there, there, tech, there is a, essentially a de facto ban on all non medically necessary, absolutely medically necessary circumcisions, but it's not entirely clear to me. Um, they, they do have a very low circumcision rate. Something like uh, 1 in 17,000 overall. But this is why it, this is why I believe it's a problem. Ooh, that doesn't happen here. It's a problem. It puts people to sleep. We all need to wake up and start working to outlaw circumcision and to, to bring justice to its victims. So, it does happen there. Let's work to end it. Thank you.